Hi everybody, this is Eugene of Auckland Lecturing Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short videos on problem solving techniques. In video number 15 we're going to take a look at radar charts. So first, what is a radar chart? Well a radar chart will illustrate graphically the size of gaps among several organisation performance areas. It's an ideal easy to use tool to help you get started by highlighting the areas where improvement is needed most. So take a look at this chart here. This is a typical radar chart. They are also called spider or polar diagrams. And this radar chart here shows two, possibly three areas of concentration under the categories integrity and quality, the very high values there, whereas speed and accuracy and price are much lower values. So whatever our values that we choose to have on our chart, we can at a glance get an idea of where the strengths and weaknesses are. So more about this in a few moments. What does a radar chart do? Well, it makes concentrations of strengths and weaknesses much more visible, as you can see on the sample diagram here. It clearly displays the important categories of performance, and if it's done well, it clearly defines full performance in each category. It captures the different perceptions of all the team members about an organisation performance, and it's a good chart and a good way to answer the question, how are we doing? So when should you use a radar chart? We'll use it to identify gaps among a number of both current organisation performance areas and ideal performance areas. In other words, identify the gap. Secondly, you could use it to compare a variety of performance data. And you can also use it to compare the performance of individuals, teams and even whole organisations, sometimes over a period of time. So let's see how we go about drawing a radar chart. The first thing to do is identify the categories of performance that you want to compare. So my sample template diagram here has got five categories labelled category 1 to category 5. And you could brainstorm all the possible categories and refine them down to about 5 to 7 would be typical. Any more in your diagram is going to get very cluttered, and any less in your diagram would have a little value. You need to think about a measure or a scale. Um, 0 to 100% is a common measure uh, for category as I have on the diagram here. So let's look at an example. In this particular one here, we're going to construct a radar chart based on individual and group measurements. Under my five categories here, for the moment, it doesn't matter what they are, I've got three individuals in a team to rate performance under each of the categories. So, for example, you can see in category number one, uh, the ratings are very high, they're between 70 and 100, whereas in category three, the ratings are very low. So these are the individual points that people can put on the radar chart. So you can get your team to rate, put their ratings up on the chart like this. And then you can reduce this down to a group average by either taking the average value or getting the group to agree on a compromise value for each of the ratings that are there. So these are represented by the five circles on each of the five categories that you see here. And then what you can do is basically fill in, join up the five large dots and fill in the area. And this gives you, at a glance, your radar chart. In category one, we can see we have an average high rating. Category two is a medium. Uh, and categories 3, 4 and 5 are quite low values. So you can see the strength in this particular one is in category 1 and the clear weakness is in category 3. Now let's take a look at a more realistic example. In this particular one here we've got the total advertising spending for an organisation over a period of time. So this could be a few weeks, a month, a quarter, or a year or even longer. And you can see in this we have five categories of spending for advertising. We have the internet, television, radio, newspaper and magazine advertising. And at a glance, you can see that most money is spent on television and on radio advertising, and that the lowest amount of money is spent on newspaper advertising, uh, magazine is medium, and internet is also medium. So these are actual figures that we can use, financial figures that we can use to create our radar chart. So we can see straight away where, where the, the strengths and weaknesses are, or where the concentrations of money that is spent are. Now we can use this in several ways. But one way we can use this is to compare our values over time. So what I've done here is I've taken the radar chart from the previous slide and put it on the left-hand side here, so it's the smaller of the two radar charts you can see. And over a period of time, we have measured the amount of advertising, that money in advertising that has been spent. So that on the larger radar chart here on the right-hand side, we can see that there's been a big change over time. And at a glance, without knowing the specific values, we can see that whereas in the left-hand radar chart, most money was spent on television advertising, over time, we can see that that has now switched to the internet advertising. Television advertising has gone down, so has radio advertising, while newspaper and magazine advertising has remained static. So by quickly comparing the two charts, um, I get a graphical illustration, a 
of the difference in spending and advertising in this particular example. So in this case, our radar chart is giving us a good, quick and graphical illustration of the strengths and weaknesses and the differences between the two radar charts over a period of time. If you found this problem solving technique useful, uh, this technique and others are covered in my new book, An Introduction to Business Systems Analysis, published by the Liffey Press and available online at Amazon.com or online bookstores. I hope you found the video useful. Thank you for your attention.